Hey everyone, this is weird. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get myself back into TikTok. It's been a long time since I've done a video. Um, but I wanted to share some book news. Um, some of you might remember that back in 2022, my fantasy novel, 14 Stones, which is my second book, was published in New Zealand by The Patchwork Raven, um, which was very exciting. And The Patchwork Raven did a wonderful job. So we got this book, which is beautiful. I um, was really happy about it. So this year, uh, we have a new American edition coming from Highlander Press, which is here in Baltimore, and it's run by the wonderful Debbie Keevan. Um, Debbie and I have been friends for about 20 years, so that's very cool. Um, and the new American edition is coming out in June, so I'm going to be sharing about that process um, and how all of that is working as we lead up to launch, so I'm really excited for all of that but kind of trying to get myself back in the swing of <laughs> social media, which for me is really difficult. Um, I thought I would share just a very little bit of the beginning of 14 Stones, an excerpt from the prologue. Um, and this is a folk tale, which um, is also called 14 Stones, gave the novel its title and kind of gets into some of the themes of the story. So I'm just gonna read the first couple minutes or so of the prologue. Once there was a woman who wished to build a house, not a house for her husband and children. She had no husband yet, was too young to have children, and in any case, she meant to live alone a while longer. She loved the scent of the wind, the warmth of the sun, and the sound of the sea as it rushed and broke against the rocky shore of her land. While she could, she wanted to have those things all to herself. She was a strange woman, or at least so her people thought. She had strange eyes, the color of the sky on a cloudless autumn day, and she had a strange will, all edges and corners without any softness. She did not seem to understand that people must find their safety in each other. The world was an uncertain place. Enemy tribes roamed the land. Wild creatures fed on the tame goats that meant food and certainty. In such a world, people must live together behind high stone walls, with spears to guard themselves. This woman loved to walk beyond those safe walls, fearing no strange man or creature. Her people called her Clia, which means wanderer. She walked under the sun that browned her skin and let the wind brush her hair, let the sea lick her fingers. At those times, delight softened the proud blue of her stare, but none of her people were there to see it. When her people built houses, they made them of stone. Stone houses clustered like eggs in a nest behind the stone guarding wall where spear-wielding men paced back and forth. The village stood on a long green hill <clears throat> at the end of a peninsula. To build a new house, people dug rock out of the hill or carried it from the shore. You must build your home out of the homeland. But Clia loved the wider land. The peninsula and the village rested in her heart <clears throat> but the broad mainland fanned itself out before her eyes. She walked there at will, greeting the woods, learning the feel of the grass of the plains under her bare feet. She knew she would build her house on the green hill, but she would build it separate, touching no other walls, sharing no other air. And she would build it not only out of the stone of home, but out of pieces of the world beyond. And I will stop there. Thank you for listening. Please stay tuned for more updates and have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.